Hello everyone, you're watching the Church of Uganda Love Gifts campaign and this is the Mission Week where we are talking about and talking to different people about their experiences with COVID-19 but also what gratitude and love means to them. My name is Shirand Wushre, thank you so much for your company. We are reminded that in, during the course of this week, we are experiencing God's love and also giving out to God's love. And there is that call center number 0800 You can call in there for prayer support, for counseling, but also to give. Join us as we celebrate God's goodness. Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Everyone. Welcome once again to the Church of Uganda Love Mission Week. My name is Sheila Ndukochide and this is a very interesting period for us to partner with the Lord to take the Church of Uganda out of debt. Over the last next or last couple of days, I've been speaking to different people who are sharing their testimonies that I believe you will benefit from. And today I have Josephine Ninsima who is going to be sharing with us her testimony throughout the COVID period, but also her contribution to the Love Gifts campaign. Welcome, Josephine. Uh, now, of course, for purposes again of audibility, I'm going to request, and since we are socially distanced, Josephine, I'm going to request that we take off our masks and you know, so that we are able to be heard by whoever is watching us. Okay, so Josephine, first of all, um, could you just run us through about, you know, run us through your experience during these COVID times. How has it been for you as a youth, as a church um, leader, if I should say? You're working within the Church of Uganda. How has that been for you? Um, like you said, my name is Josephine Nsima and I'm a staff of the Secretariat, the Church of Uganda. 
I'm a social worker by profession and uh, I've been working with the church for eight years now. So it is, it is very, very, uh, very appealing for me now to be in this, in this, in this uh, interview and to talk about what the Lord has done for me and how the lockdown has been. So basically for me, um, after the presidential directive that happened in um, early June, I was, I got an emotional uh, breakdown. I had mental, I had a mental disorder, basically because of the situations I was going in at that particular point. So I was in um, a serious relationship and I was um, scheduled to do certain things within this period that I was, I was unable to do. But also I have been working towards certain things in my life for two years that I was supposed to implement this season. So for me, uh, the lockdown meant that I was unable to do anything in my personal life, in my, in my, in my career path, in my, it was all freeze, like I couldn't do anything at that point, yeah. So everything kind of fell down and I was shattered. I got so much uh, depressed, I was scared, I got anxious, I was so, like I had everything on me. I had a battle of the mind. My mind was in a battlefield, serious battlefield. So I'll, after the, the president announced the lockdown, I think I spent um, four days without sleeping. Uh, I was just tearing through the day, tearing through the night. And uh, people would call me and ask, how are you? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm this kind of person always close, closes up. So I was breaking. I called friends. They talked to me, uh, the close people that knew what I was going through. And they shared uh, information. They shared some passages. They prayed for me, but it just wasn't working at all. Yeah. How did you overcome it? How did you come out of it? Yeah, so um, at that particular point in time, the Archbishop declared a four day fast for the Church of Uganda to pray for COVID situation. And uh, out of my obligation and my love for the church and also being a staff, I, it is my responsibility to just uh, participate in these activities. I said, let me join the fast for the four days. I fasted for four days with a team. So at first, the first day wasn't making sense at all. I was just there. Yeah. You know, when you go, when you're trying to look for an encouragement somewhere and you're not getting it, you listen to gospel music, nothing. Uh, the, the scriptures that just make sense to you now, they don't make sense at all. So, but I said, I have to do this. I have to show up every watch hour because they had watch hours every, every uh, 6 a.m., 9 a.m., midday, like a whole day and night. So I kept watching, watching with a team that was praying. Then the second day, the second day, I, I showed up again. And um, this time, by the end of the second day, I, I realized that the things I was thinking yesterday, some of them had started disappearing from my mind, yeah. Because, you know, they say that the, 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 the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So for me, by hearing the word of God, I, I was feeding my inner spirit, my inner spirit. I was trying, I was getting healed in the process. So by the fourth day, I came out. I went and I've been like, and this and this. And she told me, eh, Josephine, God, that's, that's very good. Thanks for encouraging me. And then in my heart, I'm like, oh, so you mean I, have in, yeah, I am encouraging someone? I posted it on my status. So when I did, people saw it and they were, they were happy, they were saying, Ben, how could you have not told us? So for me, it was, I just felt like I can't believe I am out of this world. Because the toughest part of any human being can fight is the part of the mind. Yeah, it can control you because it controlled me for the four days. I, it was giving me things. It would tell me this is what will happen to you. They give you the after effects, the after effects until you die. So, if I had not got this help, if I had, if God had not come through for me, I don't know what what set I would be in. And you saw you saw God come to you in a very at a very hopeless time. Exactly. exactly. And then how you also turn around now to become the source of encouragement exactly, for others. That's, exactly. that's very powerful. Yeah. So. I mean, that's, that's, we're seeing love, we're seeing God's hand, we're seeing faith, because you believed. If you didn't believe, you would not have started the fasting. And which speaks into what we're going to talk about, the love gift campaign, that most of us, um, some people want to give, expecting results there and then. And yet we understand that that's not how 
God works. That's not how God operates. What, what, what's your, how do you, how would you speak to that? Um, giving is, is uh, it comes from the heart and we don't give to, to, to receive something. We give because we are Christians. We believe in giving. I believe in the church. I believe in the ministry it does. I believe in the work that we do as a church. So I give because it is my responsibility. And when I give the church, I'm giving God. So because God has blessed me, despite my situation that I may be going through now, but I, I don't even care about it right now because I am delivered, I know God has blessed me. I have a job. I have to give back. I have my parents, I have my family, I have friends. So how can I repay for all this goodness that the Lord has shown me? And of course the scripture says, blessed are those who give them. See, what, what, what do you understand by that scripture? And uh, what, what, what lessons have you learned how to give? Yes, um, giving is you, uh, you, you, when you give, you, you, when you give, you are giving not only what you're giving, but you're giving your, yourself because sometimes you, you're obliged to give much more than you, you know. Sometimes when you, when you give out of sacrifice, you feel like, oh, this thing I'm giving out, but it is what. So, in the process of giving, you're, 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 you're giving out, you're, you're, you're learning how to give out yourself, to give out love, to give out everything that you have because by the time you can give out something sacrificial, it means you're giving out the love as well. So how else can we show love? Because love is action. Yeah, we can, so we, they say we, 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 we express love by action. Yeah, so when you do an act of love, you have shown your inner person that maybe someone even doesn't know about you and you're spreading the message because the message goes on. You know, like you give me something when I'm in a situation, I'll say, Shiva, eh, that girl is a very good girl. She gave me something, you know, she's, she's just kind hearted. Yeah. You don't just say yeah. it, yeah. you, you show. Yeah. So that is also part of the ministry. But also I still believe that we are put in this world for a purpose. And where God has assigned us to be, we are supposed to do ministry and we're supposed to contribute to his work. So when we give, we are giving the work of God and we are spreading his gospel. It's an investment. It's an investment. It's may you're not contributing. necessarily see it there and then. It's untouchable, it's, but it comes eventually. Yes, you're contributing to the kingdom of God. Right. Yes. Okay, and now of course we're in a very interesting time, the digital era, where people expect results there and then. And in fact, these days, the youth whom we belong to, me and you say, Mfunida Muwa. Yeah, and so many times they're saying, Oh, but the church is asking for us, you know, they're asking a lot of money from us, that the ones supposed to be blessing us and instead giving us the money, they're now asking us, you know, for our money or little pennies. What would you say to the youth who, with the Funida Muwa attitude? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, most of the times, especially when you're in a situation where you're lacking, because I've been there before when I was, I did have a job, you would feel like you can't really give. But also it takes someone to actually appreciate that when you give, you actually get in return. Although we don't give to get in return, but it happens all of a sudden. Here's a time I had, um, it, it was in 2013, and I'd, I didn't have a job by then, and I didn't have anything like really to give out, I was, I was jobless. So I went to church and they were saying, please bring your tithe, like all that kind of, t of uh, of messages they give for us to give. Out of my little faith, I just got the 20,000 that I had. I had 25,000. I gave the 20, I said the 5,000 will be for transport. So I must say that after that time in the evening, I received money wow. that was that double, was, gold, was 50,000, right. yes. And for that was my turning point to giving. I said, I will never stop giving to God. Whether it is what small I have, I share it with God without expecting anything because even if you even if you don't get money in return god will always come through for you when you don't expect it that is also part of my things that i go through every day when i am just what i find myself going so it is always good to give yeah so i would encourage those young people to give what they can and also uh, mobilize also mobilize resources on behalf of, of the church make sure they do the campaign for giving out so that we can all uh, ex uh, experience the goodness of the Lord in, in this season.
and that every generation has sort of had a contribution to this uh, church house. There are those who con conceptualize the idea, there are those who built it, there are those. So it's our turn now as a youth to ensure that we help the church get out of the debt that it, you know, it's, it's in right now. And through the Love Gifts campaign, and of course, like the Archbishop has said several times, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. So, um, what's your message? Uh, maybe your parting shots that you can give to the viewers watching this who are hopeless, who find themselves in the same situation that you found yourself in at the start of the lockdown. What message do you have for them? Uh, my message is they should um, they should just find hope in the presence of the Lord. We have a lot of messages going out. We have a lot of scriptures being uh, read. We have a lot of services online. Let them just be in the presence of God because it is where they can get the comfort, where they can get the hope, where they can get the love that they, they feel that they the where they feel like they have not been loved. Is that the they can get the love they need? Everything they need is the presence of the God. So let them stick to God, the Creator. Everything will just be fine. So Josephine, um, first of all, have you made a contribution to the love gift campaign? Uh, how was the process like? What inspired you to make? Uh, Contribution. When I was giving, it's not because I was a staff of the of the church. No, I was giving because uh, I want to see that 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 dream happen to the church that have been there for many years. I want to see it realized. I want to see the church house um, uh, in our hands, and also I. Um, I'm mobilizing my family. I went back and mobilized my family. They are giving, so it is a message that, that I keep spreading from from one person that I know to the next. Like we are giving this, so for me that was my motivation because I believe we I believe in the church, like I said, and also I want to see, I want to witness this dream come true for the church. Yeah. And of course, like we said earlier, that um, it doesn't matter how much you're giving. I know that the Archbishop has said. 60,000 shillings in celebration of the 60 years of self-governance as a church of Uganda. But it, it really doesn't matter how much you give as long as you know you have given with your heart yeah, and you know, you're contributing to this cause. Yeah, true. It doesn't matter. Just give what you have and everything. Because uh, God knows what we are capable of. He knows our capacity as individuals. So just give something, give something. And you know, actually, sometimes you, my 60,000, my 10,000 might be the 60,000 exactly. that's you know, for somebody else. For somebody else. Yeah, so it sure. really doesn't matter mm. whether you have 5,000 shillings. That mm. could be your 60,000. Yes, sure. It's the heart that you know, you're giving with that really, really matters. Thank you very much, Josephine Nisimba. Our preacher tonight is the Right Reverend Nathan Ahimbisiwe, the Bishop of South Ankole Diocese. He was consecrated in January 2012 as the first Bishop of South Ankole Diocese. Bishop Nathan is passionate about evangelism, youth ministry and development. He currently chairs the Provincial Board of Education. Before his consecration, he served as the chaplain at MOOBS in Kampala. Please welcome and show some love to Bishop Ahimbisiwe to the Love Gift Mission Week. Father, I bless you for who you are and for what you are. Bless you for this uh, brother, Bishop Nathan Ahimbisiwe from South Ankole Diocese, whom we have brought here to preach the gospel in the Mission Week of the Love Gift and Thanksgiving. So bless him as he begins, and bless every technical thing, and all that we stand in, in need of. Take away all the fears, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm Bishop Nathan Ayubzibwe, the Bishop of South Ankore Diocese, and I'm very grateful to God, and also to His Grace, the Archbishop, for inviting me to participate in this one week of church house love gift it is very important to be here yes we can I love this theme yes we can you remember one of the presidents who used it he went through not only one term but two terms 
in one of the big nations in this world. Some of you know him. So, yes, we can. It's a very important word, but also a statement we can use in this one week mission of church house love gift. Our Lord Jesus Christ said these words as we read in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, the master said, You will set this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Hallelujah! I love that nothing will be impossible for you. But in this, you must have that faith. He has even reduced not the biggest faith, but he says, if you had this faith like the mustard seed, mustard seed the smallest uh, seed we can have in this world. So if you had that smallest faith, I am telling you, the Bible says, it will be moved. What will be moved? The mountain. We have the church house, which God has done in his people. Our predecessors, they made a vision, hatched the vision, implemented the vision, and the church house is now in place. 16. Therefore, we give thanks to God. And it is my work, it is also your work, to see how we can give, give. Life these days is not taken for granted. I have so many people, so many of my friends, even from our diocese and other dioceses, but also property. Many people have left property. Many people have left the money. Many have left many, many things which we are treasured. But you and I, we are still living. Have we paid God for any oxygen that is not really re God is re the oxygen which he gives freely from Monday to Sunday, from the first month of the year to the last month of the year. Oh, how can we pay all that? Therefore, now that we are still living, God gives us an obligation to have this love gift. Yes, we can. Jesus told his disciples, as we read in Luke 18, 27, and says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. We are raising this 60 billion, and we are saying, if each of the 1 million population, just 1 million people, all through Uganda, and we are not limited only to Anglicans, but also to other people who love God. If each one of them gives 60 Uganda shillings, I am telling you, this 60 billion will be raised in the Tinkering Governor eye. You know, God does not joke with numbers. That's why they record if Jesus fed 5,000. They don't record if Jesus fed two people. So numbers matter in God's kingdom. But my, my, my brothers and my sisters, the faith we have must be in action. We read in James chapter 2, verse 17, that faith without works is also dead. And we cannot have dead faith. Therefore, we need to put our faith in action. And then the mountain, the 60 billion mountain of the church house, it will go. We can guarantee church house for church of Uganda's future. Hallelujah. We thank God for what he has done. And he will do it. And he can do it. I was a prefect in the school. And prefects by then were the ones to take a cup of tea at break. It was hard to take the full cup because people around would also share on the same cup I was using, those who had no privilege. And not only that, but even when I became a teacher, even when I became a clergy, and even when I became a bishop, I am still giving. And when God touches, I give. This is a time when I was at the altar in, in our days, Shamati, the cathedral. God says, you are giving some more. And say, said, go and get much bigger. I left the altar. I went and picked what he said that I should give. And when I gave, it was a great joy. 
There's a time God says, give out of your cows the biggest cow you can have. I'm telling you, I went and picked one of the cows and gave it. That week, I got back three cows from different people who gave. Give and it shall be given unto you. When you give, life has a way of giving you back the same in the same vibe. Giving is a privilege. It is not a burden. There are some people are saying, ah, oh, we had given the church house. We had donated, we had contributed. What else do we need to do? I am telling you, when you get, you give. When you get, you give. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give, give than to receive. When you don't give, either money or whatever, but I'm going to use money. When you don't give money, I am telling you many things you mean you miss because money masters you when you don't give money will master you money will control you money becomes your god smology so, to worship i am telling you when you heard that for that you begin to work for money and seek and run after money and the result is that money will not be enough but when you give even if you get more less or more people God has given and has given much. I am telling you that people have much. One of the times I was fundraising, fundraising for something and I came to one of the offices. In fact, I went to seven offices of our Dicean people here in Kampara. So I went to one of them. I told him what we are going to do. He pulled the drawer. The drawer was full of 50,000 and pulled one bundle and got another half bundle. He said, Bishop, go and do that project. People have money. But the, the, the whole door was full of money. I'm telling you, people have money. So when God has given you such a money, you need to give it. And I'm telling you, the testimony is that man was blessed even much more. And by the end of the day, in the three hours, I have raised 36 million. 36 million in a twinkling of an eye for that project. So, you need to give. Giving is the proof that you are not bound by greed and driven by materialism. You master your money by making giving your way of life. It needs to be the way of life, not only with church house, but also in other areas. Master your money. Master yourself. How much money shall we go with? The only thing we shall go with if they are very careful with you, it is one suit. It is one pair of shoes. It is also, uh, if they, in fact, these days, even the coffins are going to be rejected. Because they are saying, go in Tvera. <laughs> I am telling you, then your land is three by six. How many heads of culture have you left behind? God has given you an opportunity to give. When we read Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good or especially to those who are of the household of faith. God has given you that opportunity. And this is in this one week. That's what we are saying. Yes, we can. Yes, we can in giving. Let's stand but one. One of our Christian ladies, rang me and said, Bishop, where are you? I said, I'm at Chamati. He said, I, I want to bring my tithe. And I, I said, follow the SOPs and come. And she came. And she gave me seven million as her tithe. And let me tell you, this money was given to me as a, as a bishop, as her bishop. But I said, no, let me tell you what this money is going to do. I took her to the cathedral, I showed her what she, that, that man I'm going to use it for. And I'm telling you, she clapped, she was very happy. People want to give. But as they give, they also want accountability. Yes, we can. We are going to survive this lockdown. We can get through COVID. COVID is not here for, for a long time, for a thousand years. No, God has a, a way out 
for it. We shall overcome. But you know it has devastated the economy of the world, the social setup of the world. Many things are at stake. But let me tell you, in God's name, you will have to finish the mission God has for you. Yes, we can. We can be stronger and build stronger families in this lockdown. Many families are also suffering. In fact, let me tell you, economically, some of the uh, families are suffering. Why? There are many children who have been at school. Now they are all at home. So if you are cooking, it's more from the smaller saucepan. Now because of the lockdown and everybody is there, you look for a bigger saucepan. Bigger saucepan is bigger matoke, bigger uh, cup of tea, bigger whatever. So expenses is also bigger. But I mean this that God is more uh, ready to help us go through it. We shall overcome and build strong families. Yes, we can. Our setbacks, as the Archbishop says, your setback can be, uh, 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 can set you up. Then to become uh, your setback. Let me, let me repeat it. It says, our setback as a setup can be for that setup for our comeback. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that setback we are going through can be your setup for your coming back. And some of you, you will come out very, with very testimonies. And your life will be different. The testimonies are there. And therefore, it's my prayer that as we go through this week, we give. May God open your hands. May God open your hearts. As the Archbishop says, they transform the heads, they transform the hearts, they transform the hands, do great things. And by the way, he also adds, they also transform the pockets. Do you want to be transformed? Transform your head, your heart and your hands. And what you get, give it out. Many people have done that, they have never regretted. And I thank God that by the grace of God, we give. Those people who thought this church house to be built are very great people. We clap for you. But they had to use money. Rooms had to be taken. And it is our time for us to pay it back. We thank God for the Archbishop and the teams that God is using. The church is growing. And I thank also other people of other faiths who have come in. I heard of the Roman Catholic who gave 30 million. We clap for you. There are many others who will come. By the way, therefore, this is a season for you to give. This is a season for you to open your pockets, to go and pick in the bank. There's a time when we were in one of the conferences, and the speaker was a Nigerian. And let me tell me, never joke with the one, and, the and I gave out that one million. Let me tell you, in the twinkling of an eye, a few days later, six million, <laughs> hallelujah, six million. And not only that, when God gives, we give. And you have that opportunity to be among the number. In fact, I want to sing you that song. And when I'm singing it, think and begin preparing to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, Hallelujah! How many of you want to be among the number? Put up your hands, and I know you are there. Wherever you are, you want to be among the number. One million people all over the nation. God is going to use to do this work. By the way, it is not only this work, we shall do greater than this. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you will do my according, according to my mission, you will do greater than I did. And I'm telling you, that is what we can. And yes, we can. You have talents, you have gifts, you have abilities. Even if you don't have, pray to God that he'll give you what to give. And by the, by the time you know that, you'll do that mission. May God bless you. May God bless you abundantly. The hands that you give, the hands that you receive. The folded hands, nothing will ever come in. But the open hands, Oh, God will give you abundantly. You have testimonies. Let us pray. Father, our God, we thank you for this great mission you have given us. Thank you for calling us 
to be part of the persons you are choosing in this world to have and to join this love gift. This love gift to the church house. This love gift to other things and the mission that you have for each one of us. God, I pray that you give us that what we are supposed to give. And I know nothing is impossible with you. It will be done. Bless every giver. Bless every lover of your people. Those who do good, good will come to them. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you. Abundantly enlarge your territories and abundantly bless you now and forevermore. Amen. You can give the church house love gift through mobile money or direct bank transfer. Now for those using mobile money, Airtel, Bell star 185, star 4, star 9. Hash. Place in the business name 1196868. That is 1196868. For those ones using MTN mobile money, dial star 165, star 3. Hash. The merchant code is 6088863 or 6806088863. For international giving using World Re or send to plus five six seven seven six five one three seven four one name church of uganda 38 wheels road namrembe kampala or email contact center at church of uganda.org direct bank transfers account name church house love gift with equip bank uganda account number 10 39 20 18 17 61 9 or the swift code is e q b n Yugi KA Triple X. For help giving, call the call center toll free line at 0800 33 23 23. Thank you.